Hello to my fellow theater nerds, band geeks, studio rats, gamer punks, cyber dorks, and artsy fartsy poindexters. This is the place for us. Welcome to Art Nerds, the podcast where we sit down with our nerdy friends and talk about their art, the universe, and everything. Welcome back, friends, and welcome to Art Nerds. This is the place where we talk to our nerdy friends about their artwork. Today, I've got a new friend with me today. This is Katie Burke, and she is a local theater artisan, artist, uh, actor, director, musician, and uh, I'm anxious to hear all about everything. How are you? I'm good. How are you today? I'm doing very well, doing very well. So, Katie, um, first question right off the bat, yeah. what is your art? So um, I'd say primarily I am a theater artist. Um, New venture for me is visual art, specifically painting. Um, And also like in previous lives and I guess now um, definitely a musician. Um, It's definitely where I started was in music and it took me to the other places, I'd say. So you, uh, so you actually started in music or musical theater or? Specifically music. Um, So my father was a drummer. And he played in like several bands. So when I was growing up, uh, he would bring me to like gigs and stuff. So some of my earliest memories are of going and seeing my dad's band play. Um, Imagine me like a little five-year-old girl at like a (laughs) biker bar. um, Because that's kind of like what my (laughs) life was for a little bit. So uh, when I was five, my parents put me in piano. Uh, That lasted for a couple years. Then it was cello. That lasted for a year, already learned bass clef, so then it was trombone. Um, And then I finally gave up trombone. Um, I got into something called the Visual and Performing Arts Academy, um, which is at Larkin High School in Elgin. And it's kind of like a magnet school, but it's a public school. Um, And I, I was in the Drama Academy, and if I did that, that meant I really didn't have time to continue, like, pursuing band. Okay. So I sort of made that decision at the ripe age of 14 to put down the instrument and get on the stage. Okay. Uh, couple. So, so do you have a, <clears throat> so do you have a primary instrument? Did you ever master one or is it just, you have a general knowledge of most of the orchestra? <laughs> Um, I would say my primary instrument is my voice. Mm-hmm. I am a singer. Um, as I mentioned, my dad was in the band. So like sometimes I actually would sing some songs with them and stuff. That um, so that's kind of where it started. But uh, in terms of instruments, I don't really play instruments. Um, if I had to pick one right now, uh, I would say probably like percussion, believe it or not, because I'm good at keeping like rhythm. So I well, usually like pick up. Well, with dad being a drummer, I would suspect so. (laughs) Yeah, I guess that makes a lot of sense. Wow, I'm good at percussion. Oh, Um, yeah, that's how that works. Yeah, I guess that makes sense because I literally used a drum kit as a toy as a child. Um, Actually, we even used pots and pans. I was going to say, you probably had them them all over the house. Yeah, they were actually in the basement. So the funny thing is, like, um, you know, I don't know, like my... I think my dad's man cave was like in the basement with the drums and stuff. And like, I do remember like he would have band practice in the basement and I couldn't like, I wanted to hear, but I was supposed to be sleeping. So I would like put my ear to the vent to hear like the drums through the vents in the house. Um, But yeah, so percussion for sure. I recently, um, like we, I'm doing something called the joy of regathering and we could talk oh, about yeah, that yeah. Yeah, a, yeah. a little I, later. I, I, yeah. Well, uh, yeah. I've read about that. Yeah. It's really cool. So it's at, I'll talk about it now. It's at Cran Art Center. It's going up in September. Um, and it's a devised like theater, music, dance piece, celebrating gathering and, and life and coming together, especially out of this like darkness right. of the pandemic. Um, but that being said, we had some really cool workshops, um, one was a workshop led by Steven Taylor, who is our, our music guy. He's writing this original music for the show. Um, wow. Yeah. It's like a big deal. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, he just got a bunch of us together. A lot of us like non, like some people, non-musicians, just like regular people. He brought in like some instruments and stuff and we just kind of had a jam, like a, like just go play music you together. Figure it out kind of session. Yeah. Yeah. It was really cool. We had, um, this guy, I forgot his first name, Sh- Shantikumar Jame, who is a North Indian, um, oh gosh, I can't remember what the instrument is called, but it's like a piano accordion situation. Um, it's an Indian like hmm. instrument. So he was there. Someone had like a Chinese fiddle. 
Um, wow. It what? was insane. <laughs> and I just was on the kit because I was like, I saw the drum kit and I was like, I know this kind of. <laughs> this feels familiar. Yeah. <laughs> so so that's, the I guess, the most recent instrument is percussion. Okay. Uh, because of the joy of your gathering. So, Fun. Yeah. So you're going to be playing for this? No, no, not quite. I'm actually going to be assistant directing it. Oh. Um, yeah. So Lat- oh, that's right. You told me this. So Latrell Bright is the yeah. director. Um, frequent you know, collaborator of mine actually was my professor um, and is now my friend and still a collaborator, um, maybe a professor again, we'll see. But um, yeah, so we're working on this together. We've got um, another person, uh, Ann Kowalski-McGee, who's another assistant director. And um, yeah, it's devised. So that means uh, it starts with an idea. Yeah, no script, no nothing, just yeah, a vague direction if i remember right it's sort of yeah school days. there's a little bit of a script um but not much and honestly we don't think there will be much speaking if any at all mm-hmm. it's mostly going to be movement based um there's going to be a whole middle section which is just like like dance and stuff right so but the idea is like in the, the beginning we really want like normal just normal scenes of human life and yeah. people and yeah yeah the the movement base sounds very Latrell Bright. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's Latrell Bright. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, that sounds fascinating. Yeah. I, uh, yeah, you're gonna have to give me that information so we can put it in the description. Yes. Yeah. yeah, it's actually one night only, September seventeenth. So. Um, oh, so you're just getting started on this thing. Yeah. Kind well, of, we sorta. started like earlier this semester. It's also it's being supported by like Beckman Institute as well. Okay. Um, Crane Art Center is part of the New Works. Series. Oh, okay. So cool. first it started with workshops and then it's like, then we're, we're doing some devising workshops and actually the audition is Monday, May 9th. Um, I'm not sure if this will be out in time for that. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe not. It'll but, squeak in, but okay. maybe, yeah. Uh, but if anyone wants to audition, please audition. <laughs> so. Yeah. Interesting. No, that sounds fantastic. <laughs> now, uh, back to being 14 years old and what... What what drove the decision to uh, jump from music to music and band to theater arts? Um, it honestly really was the the time of in my high school schedule. Like I I know that sounds like awful, but you kind of have to like pick one art. Oh no! <laughs> because it was two periods, so we had eight periods. So the last two periods of the day. I would eat lunch for like 30 minutes and then we would go do theater the rest of the day, every day, all of high school. Um, wow. So, I mean, I, of course I wanted to do that. Um, I had started in theater, like children's theater. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I think my first play was like, actually it was at the high school as a Christmas carol. I played like Scrooge's like sister in the flashback. Oh, okay. Yeah. Scenes. Um, but then I did like children's theater and I just really loved it. I loved like the community um, with theater, but I also just like really liked dressing up and like putting on makeup. So <laughs> I will totally agree with you. I mean, even for uh, little boys like me, yeah, I loved bow ties and vests and top hats when I was a kid, and you know all that weird stuff. What about eyeliner? No eyeliner, <laughs> monocles. And wire room glasses. Nice. <laughs> I would take the lenses out of uh, antique wire room glasses and the whole bit. But yeah, I, I totally get that aspect of it. Mm-hmm. But it, so you had done theater prior to uh, that choice. That choice. Yeah. 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 Okay. Definitely. So, yeah. but it was just a practical. It was a practical <laughs> decision. I mean, I have to be honest. I'm. My mom always likes to say I've been like 30 since I was like born. So <laughs> okay, I yeah. I don't know. I've just like always been able to make sort of those kinds of Something decisions. Intuit- okay. So yeah, an intuitive decision. Something almost. intuitive about it. Interesting. Yeah, I guess I knew that I liked it better than band. Um, okay. I'm. It's also kind of coming back to me. At the time, <laughs> yeah. um, we had just gotten our beagle who hated the trombone sound. Oh. So I think that also might have weighed into the decision. Like, literally every time I tried to practice, he would, like, wail at me. Oh. Just okay, <laughs> that could be <laughs> <laughs> At least one facet of this decision. <laughs> yes. That's funny. Um, now, you said you're getting into directing as well. Yes. I've done it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, let me ask you this then. Um, what... 
now that you're into the, you know, you've been working with, do you have a favorite aspect of the theater? Do you like a performance better? Do you like a director? Do you design much? And, or Um, yeah, I, I have a design mind, if that makes sense. Like I, hmm, how do I explain it? I am a hugely visual person. Right. Yeah. I see things that people don't see sometimes. I don't know. Um, I'm really, I don't know how to explain it. Uh, let, let me help. Okay. Uh, let, me, let, me, let me try. I, okay. Because I know my brain, I don't think well in words, like words on the page kind of text. Mm-hmm. My brain thinks in pictures. You yes. tell me a story and I see the picture form of it, Absolutely. the comic book form of it, as opposed to and I realized this one day when I was talking, when, uh, I was in grad school and we, spoke, we were supposed to have read something. We mm-hmm. were arguing over what this passage was in some article that we were supposed to have read. And my professor, he goes, oh no, this is exactly what it is. He put his hand up in the air and literally traced the words out in the air. He was reading it in his mind. Hmm. And I realized, oh, that's why he does this. He can think, he thinks in words. He yeah. thinks in the written word. And I realized... I can't do that. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I, is it those kinds of... Yeah. Just cognitive, your cognitive weirdness that... Probably. That you- like, I I don't know. Like, I think it's just like I see these pictures and I want to create them. Or mm-hmm. like, I see shapes and I see power dynamics in the shapes, if that makes sense. And sure. that translates like really well to the stage. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean- um, So I think in, in, in terms of like what I also like about directing outside of just like the, the visual like aspects of it. And I actually just talked to a friend, uh, Dominique Allen, about this mm-hmm. and actually cried when I was telling her. Um, I really love just bringing people together. Um, I talked about like to her, like a lot of the friendships I've created by casting people in shows, relationships I've created, not like, you know, me single handedly, but like just fostering that like connection. Yeah. Like what we're doing right now. Just exactly. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Um, you said creating the relationship and it brings up a subject that I, one of my favorite I don't know if it's academic or just old man or what, but there's a relationship, you know, the relationship between players and audience. Mm -hmm. I mean, is that part of the equation as well? Uh, Yeah, totally. Um, That actually just brought me back to when I directed Pippin. Um, because they're literally called like the players right. uh, in it's the show. show. It's yeah. incredible. Um, I'm a huge fan of like 70s musicals. That's kind of like my vibe. Okay. Um, but yeah, definitely like audience and I love breaking the third the third <laughs> the fourth wall um, you know like things <laughs> third, like that if I can get close like the third baby but uh, <laughs> yeah specifically for Pippin there was like a lot of that um, I think it really depends on like the nature of the script sure um, there's certain ones like um, like Silent Sky I was just like I I can't like it's it's too re- it's too real. Like it's she's in this, and for Pippin, there is in the in the story, it's like ingrained that there's a sense of like there's the players, and then there's the people they play for. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think like a show like Silent Sky like unified the the audience and the players in this like specific world. Right. So it just it depends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. I yeah I tell people all the time I have this deep seated mistrust of the fourth wall. <laughs> 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 yeah. So, I, so when you say those kind of words, it like automatically goes to this argument, like, no, audience needs to be closer. And yeah, some of the guys I work for hate that because it means more work for them, the technicians and the designers. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, sometimes like I, through this conversation, I'm realizing like the, when I'm directing, the audience is like not always that's not like the first factor for me. It's, it's the story. It's the, the you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, like yeah, I yeah. don't always think about how, how is the audience going to think about this? Because every single person's going to think differently about anything right. they see. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, I don't know. I just, maybe sometimes I'm like, okay, Hey, here, I know we're going to get some laughter on this line. So maybe just pause a little bit. Yeah. But, I mean, I think there's some technical things Yeah. when yeah. considering, you know, when directing, but but yeah, and I agree with you that story first, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but there's, but I think it's always too, at least for me, there's a relationship. There's, you know, like you said, the emotional relationship mm-hmm. between them I mean, through the story. Yeah. But I think I th- 
for me, the physical relationship sure. can alter that that first connection. So I think uh, for you and I, I think we maybe had this kind of conversation before. Um, I think you you like proscenium. You like directing in proscenium, or what do I, you? You I, don't, I, or I do not. You do not. Okay, never mind. Okay, I can. I've done okay. it. It's not my favorite. I've, yeah, I can say eighty percent of what I've ever done has been in a black box, Type. all to, all you know, not proscenium situation. Okay, okay. So I was just curious. So, yeah. yeah. Go ahead. I was just curious about that because um, I think that it, how your stage setup does change that relationship between, mm -hmm. um, you know, for proscenium and for those who are not like theater people. That's just like your traditional. Here's the stage and the audience is like over here. Yeah. Your picture frame stage. Your right? picture frame stage. Um, that that creates a distanced relationship between the performance and the audience. So naturally right. it, there's going to be that that distance versus like when I directed Mamma Mia at the station theater when it was like three quarter thrust, but also kind of the audience was in the middle. Mm -hmm. um, it, it really, the audience really received that well because they felt like they were part of the, mm -hmm. the fun and part of the story. So, <coughs> yeah. Um, yeah, and especially if it's not like Mamma Mia where, you know, you're right on stage clapping along, having a grand time. Mm -hmm. and, and you know the songs, you're singing and, along. Yeah, and you know, and especially if your performers aren't afraid to uh, make eye contact. And, oh yeah. 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 I mean, my lead was <laughs> Renee Wilson. I'm not so sure if you oh, know, know Renee, Renee but oh, like know, she's I a beautiful Renee. goddess. Yes, um, I adore and Renee. yeah, she connected like really, really well. I, I, all of them, the entire cast was phenomenal. Yeah. So, but, but so, and so, so you don't like, so you do like the proscenium. No, <laughs> no, let's be clear. No, um, absolutely not. I like, that's my last choice. Um, if I, I think I prefer a three quarter thrust where the audience is on three sides and you've got, you know, you got some angles there. Um, my favorite shape is the triangle. Um, I incorporate triangles in all my blocking all the time. Sure. Um, and I feel like the triangle is really, really powerful in the three quarter thrust. So, um, just in terms of sight lines and stuff. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. So, yeah. That makes perfect sense. Yeah. So I feel like me, like, I don't know. I keep going back to this triangle thing, but it's, I can talk about it a little more. Okay. I love triangles because it is the strongest shape mm -hmm. known to man in terms of architecture. Uh, I think geometrically, in, geometrically, it's yeah. So I, yeah. in terms of like theater directing, I, my brain tends to like stage in triangles, um, because I just think it's really powerful and impactful. Sure. So that's interesting. Now I'm thinking about, have I ever done it in triangles? <laughs> I don't think of it, you know, when I direct, I don't think in, you know, blocking in shapes, but I suspect some of that's already there. Yeah, totally. I bet it is. Uh, now I'm going to pay attention to it next time I do something. Anyway, that's interesting. That's really interesting. There's this really fun game that I learned from Latrell Bright, again, theater director, genius friend, um, where you have your group of people um, and everyone picks two other people in the room and everyone walks the space and you try to remain in a triangle equidistant with those two people you selected. And so you're kind of like running around the room, looking at your people, trying to stay in this this triangle. Um, and it's so fun. And then when you find you're finally at your good equal triangle, you stop. And then that's when it's over. Um, but it's not over until everyone finds that perfect equilateral equilateral triangle between them and these other people. Um, I've incorporated that into some rehearsals. Sure. And it has created the most beautiful stage pictures ever. So I, for anyone who's out there, like highly recommend that tactic if you're looking to add yeah, some Yeah, that's really so, interesting. Yeah. What? Oh, man. I'm going to have to cut this up now. This, this. That's totally fine. <laughs> we kind of went on a tangent about triangles. No, 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 it was fine. my fault. But No, no, it's not <laughs> you. No, but you're making me think, I think is. Good. And I'm screeching into this weird halt. Um. And do I? Okay. Now I'm gonna have to, we're going to have to get like in another year after we've done a couple more things. <laughs> we'll talk more. We'll, we'll talk, talk more. more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so now you have recently, you said you've recently gotten more into, now you, you've transitioned from, you've gone from music, you've, mm -hmm. uh, still in your theater phase, still in your music phase. Yeah. It all intertwines. It all intertwines. But now you've gotten into uh, 
fine art. This is true. Uh, I am a painter. This is new this ish. Is, uh, how new ish? New ish December of 2021. <laughs> Oh, you're not a like, year yet. Like not even a year. Yeah. Well, like it's something that I always had in me, if that makes sense. Like I knew I could do it. Right. Um, remember when I was talking about how you could like only choose like one art to do? Well, guess what? I never could take <laughs> art class <laughs> because I was doing band and theater. Um, so I didn't really get the opportunity or like resources to explore this talent that I have that I knew I had. Um Last year, um, well, uh, yeah, last year I met um, someone named Katie Newhouse, who okay. is wonderful. Um, she, like, co-owns with Travis McNeese um, Prism Studios, which is a, like, local kind of, like, yeah. group. And they do paint at your own pace. Mm -hmm. um, they do, like, I the first event I went to was, like, a wine and paint night. Oh, yeah. Um, and just like little things like that. So that's how I got started is I went, I actually found out I got a new job. I was like on a wonderful high. I went to this wine and paint night, really like hung out with Katie, paint, painted this really cool deer. Um, and she like, I don't know, she kind of like inspired me to keep going. Um, and nice. I did. So, and then all of a sudden we were hanging out and um, she said, hey, I've got this, sh this art show coming up. Do you, do you want to do it? Um, and I'm like, oh my gosh, really? I like have nothing. <laughs> uh, I got to paint like a fiend, but okay, I'll do it. And so I said, sure. And then I was like, when is it? She was like, three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> so I painted like six paintings in three weeks or four small, but. But you did I it. I did it. <laughs> yeah. It was yeah, it. liberating actually. And I painted them mostly for the theme of the show. Which was? Uh, it was like, uh, oh gosh, it was spirituality. Um, in, it was called Intersections and Identity and Spirituality. So like oh. where those crossroads lie. So I kind of like went back to, um, you know, like my my upbringing was in like the Catholic Church. So I kind of like, I don't know, I did like a rosary that with tears. Um, I did like a censer with like incense coming out of it. Um, I did like my own incense that I burned. That was actually a two part piece. There was like one painting called frankincense and one that, which was like the incense that I burn like normal, right. Fun, hippie stuff. And then there was the myrrh, myrrh was the traditional sensor. Okay. Um, that was like, oh, that's do you know what I'm talking about yeah, when I say that? It's like yeah. the gold thing. And then the, yeah, the guy the, like swings it around. Yeah. What's the, yeah. Yeah. The, the incense in it. Yeah. I know yeah. what you're talking about. And I actually donated that piece um, to Soul Care, where we had the show. So um, the well, woman... I want to say what an interesting combination yeah. of, of uses of that, the, the incense. In yeah, it, it's like, it's nice. I mean, when you go, like, when you... For me, I'm not really religious. So when you say, like, spirituality and stuff, I... It doesn't mean the same thing as other, other people. Yeah, exactly. Um, so for me, I literally, the first thing I thought was incense. So... Um, Hmm. So yeah, now I'm now that that show's over, I'm kind of like exploring some things that I want to paint. Like, of course, I wanted to paint those things, but without like a theme in mind. Um, I've really uh, I've done two like colorful like nudes kind of lately. Okay. To be honest, um, I really think I like studying like the human form. I yeah, I really do enjoy it. So I actually did like one of me and then I did one of my friend Dominique as well. So yeah. Um, yeah. So do you is it very technical question, oils, watercolors, acrylics? What do you Yeah, it's acrylics. Um mostly acrylic just because that's like what was initially available to me through Prism. Um Okay. Oh, and also through Prism I do paint every Thursday at Brew Lab. Um we have a paint at your pace. So I like go and paint literally every Thursday and it's so healing for your soul. And Interesting. yeah, yeah, it's just great. Brew labs. Brew lab. Yeah. It's okay. on campus. It's like a, it's like a cute little coffee place. Um, it's near, um, the old pizza hut hut that they just knocked down and they're actually building a raising canes there. Oh, it's on, like, like on campus town. Yeah. It's there. like yeah. green and fit for one of those numbers. yeah right 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 down on the busy 
Yeah, and, and they have I, other ones. I think uh, Prism just got a membership at IMC, Independent Media Center. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'll so, buy Lincoln Square there. Exactly. So I think they're going to be doing a paint at your pace like every Sunday there. So, um, oh, very so cool. I'll probably be painting Thursdays and Sundays. So, so is it? So the paint at your pace, is it just a, is it a meditative thing? Is it a guided instruction thing? Is it just practice time? or? It's like whatever you want. So essentially you come in and you can just like purchase a canvas and just just do it they give you everything you need they clean up after whoa i know like th that's the thing is like i don't have to clean the brushes <laughs> so like, <laughs> that's a bad habit to get I know. into <laughs> i know actually at home they kind of just like pile up so um then i like buy more <laughs> so, yeah um i also like on my days i work from home i i paint sometimes <laughs> like if there's a bit of a lull i'm like okay let me pull this out and work on it so. Are you finding that this painting is more fulfilling or more interesting or more of anything than, mm. say, the performing arts? Or is it just, I'll let you take that. Or is it less of something or is it? I think they're informing each other. Um, I don't think I, hmm. I wouldn't say like one love for one outweighs like the love for the other. If that right, makes and I don't sense. think that's what I'm asking. Okay, I'm, can I you clarify think, then? Yeah, then um, I'm I, I'm guessing on this. You know, if in in these listening to what you're describing, it sounds like yes, I would agree that all the all every art form you ever get into will inform the other ones that you're yeah. in. That I don't think that can be helped. Um, I'm, but like in terms of your, 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 your heart and your head, sure. is there, you know, what, well, here, let me ask one of my questions from my list. Okay, please. What yeah. about, you know, what about these things turn you on and sure. how, and I think what I'm asking is, does painting turn you on in ways that theater doesn't and music doesn't and music mm. turns you on in ways that the others don't and, you know, put that triangle into <laughs> triangles um see i'm gonna bring it around yet. yeah i i think that like painting is oh it's okay it's not as active it's pretty sedentary right you're sitting okay um i mean it, i mean you're moving your arms and stuff um but like for mentally mentally and like for my heart it's kind of like a relaxation art form uh theater is like i'm i'm a very like active like i'm up on my feet i actually like always need my shoes off because I can't think without without having my <laughs> shoes off for some reason. And also Latrell does that, um, which is kind of funny. But um, but yeah, theater is like for my head and my brain, like I'm going to be honest, like I almost I I burned out. Sure. Um, I burned out. Um, luckily, it timed <laughs> luckily and terribly it timed with the pandemic. Um, but theater for me was getting a little unhealthy. Um, I was doing it too much, so it, it can happen. Yes. Yeah, and I was working full time, and I was going to rehearsal until like ten or eleven, and I was waking up and doing it all over again. And it and at the time, it was just like a there was a lot of hard life circumstances, mm -hmm. so I actually like needed a big break. So I didn't think the break would be like the pandemic, um, oh. <laughs> but uh, you know, it it happened, and then. Yeah, I don't know. In terms of music, like I think that's more of a social thing for me. Um, I tend to like do more musical stuff when I'm like with a group of people. So, so I have like these different. Or I, I hope I'm answering your question. I don't know if I'm Absolutely. like not comprehending no, no, no. it well enough, but no, you're okay. uh, you're more than answering it. Okay, okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, granted, theater and music tend to be more cooperative social exactly you, you can't do theater alone mm -hmm. i mean you can but it's boring yeah um but the painting at least to me again and again just based on what you're saying it's a more it, it's a more meditative more introspective art form yes does that make sense it, yeah absolutely. and am i right on this yeah i would say so um i think the fun part about like painting is that you can do it alone or with others um like I guess same goes for like music and like theater and stuff but like for painting like I think when people think of a painter they think of like a person like alone in their room like <laughs> working on this like you know like Van Gogh or something like that um but for me I find it to be pretty social like I said I go to those paint at your paces 
Um, my friend Katie will often just like say like, Hey, you want to paint tonight? Or, you know, I'm like, Hey, right. what are you doing? Let's do this together. So, um, the great thing that all of these like art forms have in common is that they bring people together. Yeah. Um, and I, like I said, that's what I love about directing, but that's also just like what I love about art period is right. it's, it's, it, it's unifying. So very interesting. Yeah. And I, Cause I anticipated the response of painting can be because you know, the art form, because the actual art is a one person form. You know, it's not like it's a so Yeah. You can be social while you're doing it, mm -hmm. but the actual art form itself is you and you alone. The actual art piece that's coming out is you and you alone. This is true. Um, I was, and I don't know if that plays a part in it. I'm curious to know if you think it does. Um, see, and here's the thing is that it's not always you and you alone because I was kind of introduced to this really cool idea that you can start a painting and then give it to a friend and then they add something who gives it to a friend <laughs> who adds something. So, um, so I don't know. Yeah. When you're alone, it's, it's meditative. It's, it's nice. It, it's relaxing. Sometimes it is frustrating. Um, but I think it's the, it's really fun to just kind of like pass things around and, and see what happens. That's interesting. So, yeah. I so. actually, I'm working on a piece right now that Katie gave me. Um, and I did something that Katie did that another um, uh, artist in town, Mark Anthony, did. Um, I can't remember his last name. though. <laughs> um, so essentially, art for you is about the people? What, mm. and, or... And again, I'm. Mm -hmm. This is just what I'm observing. Tell me if I'm wrong. It, I, you know, I think that's regardless right. Regardless <laughs> of the art, <laughs> I think you're right. Regardless of the art form. Yeah. So is that what turns you on about artwork? Yeah, I think it's is it's the people. <laughs> yeah, because it's like I don't know. It's like the one time you can, not the one time, but you can be yourself around these people because most of the time artists are just like as equally as weird as you are and you can just <laughs> be yourself. Yeah. Yeah. So why, and, and you know, us artists, we, um, sometimes we had a hard time, you know, oh. growing up and we have this, like, we need this community and this comfort. Would you, would you, th okay. Uh, would you consider artists and those artsy fartsy types, um, uh, to be less judgmental as, as and again, this is just, you're inspiring questions, and I'm curious yeah. to know your, your response. I'm going to say no. Um, I think it it really just depends on who you are, if you're a judgmental or non-judgmental person. But the people you hang out with. I mean, oh. you say this community. Do you oh. find that that community no. is more or less judgmental? Non -ju or? I'd say non-judgmental, especially the people I find myself with. Like, I can, you know, I could probably say something i don't know i wouldn't say anything dumb but i, I can say what i want in front right. of them and it's and i'm not gonna like worry about how it's taken uh if that makes sense mm -hmm. unless it's like something way out of base but i, I don't like say stuff like that i don't know uh, <laughs> but there's a, there's a comfort level there is a comfort level yeah um i think that there are some people in the art in arts who are very judgmental um and sure. i'd say like maybe before when i was younger i was more judgmental especially when i was an actor that's what i'm gonna say when i was an actor i was more judgmental um i love actors but yeah like yeah <laughs> okay i think that's a whole nother podcast but go ahead <laughs> <laughs> no that's that's kind of it <laughs> anything about these these separate arts art forms or art in general anything about it that ever turns you off um, turns me off. Ooh, that's hard. Cause like, I, I just associate. Every time, I, every time I ask this question, everybody goes, oh, I don't know. Yeah. Like, like, like nobody's ever thought about it. I just associate art with positivity. So I'm not, you know, um. That's your happy place, huh? Yeah, it is. It really is. Especially when you work a nine to five job that's not artistic. <laughs> You're like, you find <laughs> refuge in your art. Yeah, so. you go home and. Talk to your house plants and <laughs> <laughs> or your cats. Oh, your cats, yeah. right? <laughs> like me. Yeah, Katie's um, got a new kitten, so I do. His name is Claude Monet. Um, Claude Monet. Yes, he goes by Claude for sure. Short, and then my other cat is uh, Toulouse, um, named after Toulouse Lautrec, Lautrec, who is also an artist. So. <laughs> yeah, perfect. <laughs> um, but in terms of like turning me off, like I don't know. I think. Oh, okay. 
I'm going to get real. I'm going to get real. Go for I it. I think what turns okay. me off is when people try, not people try, but people want to see you doing certain things that you just don't want to do. Like maybe as a, mm -hmm. I think I'm saying this more as like a director, um, just like, just like, I don't know. I feel like because of the shows I've done, um, there's this like, oh, it's Katie. She does like these light, feminist, happy, you know? And like, I just really want to do some dark, messed up theater. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm just like, who's going to let me do it? Right. Like, I don't. Uh, yeah, I've done so, that. I want to try this. Yeah, in exactly. The, within the theater realm. Yeah. But, but when you're a woman, you, oh, you sometimes they're like you gotta do the woman show you know and i like or like how do i explain it <laughs> like you're stereotyped you're pigeonholed yeah and that's also like a a huge reason why i just go by kt um just the letters in terms of like my artist names when you look at that like you may you don't know you don't you don't know well you don't gender, know who that is kt could be there's no gender like, to it could be like Kevin Taylor, or yeah. you know what I mean? There's no so, gen yeah, it takes away the gender. So, mm -hmm. so I, I guess I thought like, you know, if I apply or I try to like throw my name in the pot there and I, I use this like more ambiguous kind of name, will they be more likely to let me do the things I want to do instead of the things they want me to do? Do you have enough information to know if that experiment is working or not? I don't because I really haven't thrown my name into the pot lately. Okay. I'd say like the this joy of regathering at Craner is the first thing I've done since before the pandemic okay. in terms of theater. Um, by choice. By choice. Um, I didn't expect to do this show, but I am so glad I am. I went to the first workshop with Latrell for Joy of Regathering. Um, and I was like, so can I work on this? Because it like, in, it it's different. It's different. It's devised. It's not like mm -hmm. the cut standard cut and dry, like directing kind of process I've been doing. So it's, it's new, it's different. And I think I want to explore more, um, non-traditional types of theater. Interesting. Okay. Out. So mm -hmm. are you the type to get bo that gets bored doing things by rote and over and over and yeah, I'll be, like, I'll yeah. tell you my story here in a minute, but go ahead. Yeah, <laughs> I would say so. Um, I just like think that I want to learn as much as I, I can. I want to be like a better director and like theater artist. So I just want to keep like exploring sure. more types of things. Like I'm already like thinking of like a next kind of like experimental like art combined with theater type of situation. Um, so, uh, it's kind of like, cool. yeah, it's like Dada, um, inspired. Oh. So, um, yeah, I, I can't really talk too much about it cause it's like, I mean, I haven't really even talked to the person much who, who but wrote something. these, but, but there's something cool brewing that's, yeah, there's something cool brewing <laughs> and it's like a theater piece that's in like <laughs> multiple places, but all at the same time. And the people will have to walk room to room. And they'll experience little snippets of theater each room that they go into. And each room will also have art in it that's for sale. So it's this whole thing. I have this in my brain. It's going to happen. I don't know when or how, but it will. Let us know. Okay. I'm intrigued. <laughs> yeah. I'm fascinated by just what you've just said. Good. I, truly fascinated. Interesting. Um, so getting into things you don't want to do. I mean, because... Yeah. I, 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 again, I, I think you and I have had, if not the same experiences, certainly related experiences in that, uh, after I got out of undergrad, I landed a nice job as an assistant technical director in a small, um, small state college. Mm -hmm. And for five years, that's, you know, I, we uh, built shows that was part, you know, I was the carpenter there was an, another electrician. There was another, uh, sound engineer and. The three of us, you know, did most of the tech work for wow. Uh, the small, three people. <laughs> well, the, we were the, in charge of a student crew. Okay, okay. We had a nice side. No, but you know, we each all had our specialty. Sure. But after like four years, it was okay. Four times a year, you would get the stuff out of the basement, rearrange it, repaint it, put it up, do a show, take it down, put it back in the basement, and then take a nap, and then come back mm -hmm. and start the paperwork for the next go round. Mm -hmm. And us, and it, it be, you know, after a few years, it became so monotonous. 
It didn't matter what show we could have done. We could have done anything and I would have found it boring only because uh, the process was so mundane. Mm -hmm. Um, That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So I don't know if it's, for me, a lot of it's process. I mean, I can, I've, I don't know if it's so much the story, but I really love the process. I love working with new actors Mm -hmm. and new performers and like you said, trying these new things and trying these formats and trying new. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, is there a fifth wall? Is there a fourth wall? Are there any walls? <laughs> no walls. <laughs> is there, you know, nine and three quarter walls. Um, <laughs> 1D. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, I like that. I like that process. Um, and I don't know if you had the same kind of experience or, um, or at, I least, have- at least, you know, same kind of notion of it. I I haven't really had like a like a cyclical like kind of experience like that where I just like was tired of like the monotony um, because I do try to change things up every time. Um, That being said, like listening to you (laughs) talk about that, like my eventual goal is to be a professor of theater. Um, And so when you were saying that part of me started to get a little worried. I'm like, oh, no, I'm like, am I going to get like tired of the same thing every year uh, over and over again? But I think that if you intentionally find ways to, I don't know. I feel like I could find ways to make things different intentionally. Yeah. So. And I, th- I think that's because at the time I was just one of the tech crew, mm-hmm. you know, and I wasn't thought of as an artist. Lame. I, yeah. <clears throat> well, tech I had, are artists, but I, you know, uh, in the academic sense and in, you know, that kind of, yeah. uh, theater, organization sense i hadn't earned it yet okay i see what you're saying so i had designed a couple things which breaks up the monotony Mm -hmm. but um yeah i hadn't earned it yet so but yeah don't be afraid of being a a professor of theater Mm -hmm. because they look to you to break the monotony you know we're the ones who are yeah (laughs) yeah that's true let's do something interesting yes you know you know yeah you'll have to do you Pencil can, pushing. Yeah, well, that, and, you know, if you're in an academic setting, you'll have to do, you know, you can't take it with you and those American classics. No. <laughs> I'm, I'm just going to say this now. Whoever listened to this, no. Okay? Like, I'll do a cl- maybe a classic, but you're going to let me do something weird with it. All right? That's just it, though. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, waiting for Godot in the round mm. was wonderful fun. I've actually done that show as well. Um, You have done it? I have. I was assistant director for that. um, And we actually did it in the stock pavilion at UIUC. Really? Where they like show cattle for sale. And it was like beautiful. Um, Perfect. That's a great setting. Yeah. It was, it was so desolate. um, And they're, I don't know. I really also enjoyed the people who worked on that show. That was, that was my sophomore year of college actually. So it was quite a while ago. But still it's. It's such a, you know, instead of putting it on a small proscenium. Exactly. You know, I don't need to, yeah, I totally understand that. I don't need to do it the same way it's been done. Yeah, because like, why? Yeah. Why? Because chances are like, <laughs> with with a t- typical theater audience, like, and it's changing. Um, depends on where you go. But it's usually Absolutely. a lot of old people. <laughs> And they've probably already seen Waiting for Godot in proscenium, like probably four times already. So, yeah. and I, something I definitely learned from being at the station um, is like, uh, like specifically like these older audiences really like that like raunchy, like out of the box renditions of really? things. Yes, they do. <laughs> I, they really do. So, see, I work at the local community college next to this theater that she's talking about, <laughs> and our older crowd not a big fan of the the, of bright, the raunchy of, or the the new conceptions <laughs> like just like new stuff in general you mean just or? you know just you know if you get a slightly new twist on an old favorite then yeah, yeah they'll, they'll start looking at it side-eyed <sighs> i mean most of them are pretty receptive but you know i think the conservative older crowd yes lands on my side of town <laughs> Yeah, I I mean, I think that's some that's actually something to say for like college and university theater. It's like and just arts as a whole. It's like, who are the donors? Because like, unfortunately, (laughs) the shows sometimes are made for them. Yeah. Well, yeah. You know, you got to 
You got to appease them, yeah, right? Yeah, theater's a business. But I sometimes get it. you want to piss them off because yeah. it's fun. That's why you get into academic theater because you can do the workshoppy stuff. There you go. <laughs> yeah. you know? That's true. Yeah. <laughs> you put the crazy masks on Shakespeare and go for it. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Last few questions here. Sure. As we get, as we start wrapping up. Um, is there any other art form that you would like to try that you have not tried at this point? Because it looks like you, in the course of your life, you're going to wander um, <laughs> through different yeah, okay. art forms. Or- I I feel like I've touched a lot of them directly or indirectly. Like I haven't talked about like dancing or anything, but I definitely like love dancing and stuff. I was a cheerleader in high school and we had to like dance as part of like cheer of course it was very stiff and i had to unlearn that uh, <laughs> when i like did college musical theater i was super stiff and i was like what's going on but um in terms of like other art forms i want to explore in music specifically i've always wanted to take opera lessons um really yes <laughs> so we'll see what intrigues you about opera i mean i, I, um, I say go for it i may love i mean my wife's a trained opera singer, so. Oh, really? I get it. Yeah. I didn't know that. Okay. Um, I already know I can do it. It's like, <laughs> okay, it's like painting. I already know I can do it. I just like don't have the. Just need to hold those skills. The from, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, I just need like to like formally sign up and learn from like a crazy like French Canadian woman or something like that. Not that's actually who was my piano teacher. She also taught opera. She was a like crazy French Canadian woman. Um, but I didn't take opera lessons from her, just piano. Um, I wish I took opera, but, um, yeah, I don't know. There's just something about like that, like, Big, loud, round sound that I love. So, Fun. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, now, is there any art form that you can think of that you know you would never want to get into or never want to try? Yeah. Point shoes? No. Point? Oh. <laughs> yeah. We're not doing the Bell- point ballet doing- <laughs> shoes. I've seen what those feet look like. Um, I don't big, know. Not a big fan of pain. <laughs> I also have like really wide feet, so I doubt they would even fit in, in them. So it's just like it would just not go well. Um, but definitely that. <laughs> no point shoes. <laughs> no point shoes. <laughs> Funny. Um, last question. Okay. Um, yeah. Where can we see or hear more of your artwork? Yeah, art. totally. Um, so I created an art Instagram this year. Um, uh, I've been meaning to do that for like a while, just have like separation from like personal and like art stuff. So I, it's, uh, KT dot Burke, B U R K E dot arts on Instagram. So KT dot Burke dot arts on Instagram. Um, I first started just by sharing like paintings and stuff. Cause I noticed a lot of my other painter friends had like art Instagrams. Um, then I was like, wait a second, I do like other things. So I started posting <laughs> about theater on it as well. So you can see kind of some snapshots and I'll, okay. I'll keep posting. Um, but that's really it. Um, I'm, I'm a very visual person. So Instagram is my preferred social yeah, media. Yeah. I, I, I like that one as well. Um, but you also coming up, um, and September is the, yes. the gathering. The joy of regathering. The joy yes. of regathering. Yes. And uh, we'll put that in there as well. I'll get that yeah. information and we'll put that in there. Okay. Anything else you want to put in there? Um, Check out Prism Studios. And I'm going to shout them out. Like, okay. They are really so encouraging and wonderful. Like, even if you're not, like, if you're like, I'm not a painter at all. Yes, you are. And they're going to show you that. So, yeah. That's lovely to hear. Mm -hmm. You know, that kind of encouragement from others is marvelous to hear. Yeah. Yeah. Katie, uh, thank you so much. Yes, thank Thank you. you. (laughs) It's it's nice to finally get you over here. Yeah, (laughs) it took a little bit, you know, a little bit of of life stuff. Scheduling conflicts, but. And getting a new kitten. So that was a whole thing. That's time consuming. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, it's been really nice to talk to you. Yeah, you too. And uh, thank you so much for hanging out. Thank you. Thanks for hanging around and geeking out with us. If you enjoyed the show, hit the like and subscribe buttons. And more importantly, join the conversation and leave us a message or comment. We'd love to hear about your nerdy art. Thanks again, and join us next week for more Art Nerds.